Well, hello everyone. It's great to be with you. I hope you're doing really, really well. I hope you're having a good year so far. You're taking care of your loved ones. You're, you're growing, you're learning, you're building all kinds of awesome things. And uh, it has certainly been a long time since I posted anything on this channel. And I get so many messages uh, from folks in the audience, even when I haven't posted in a long, long time, people uh, uh, sending messages of support. And if that's you, thank you so much. It's really great to have that encouragement. I, I appreciate it. And a lot of people have been asking me, is the channel dead? Is the channel dead? And the answer is no, no, it's not dead. It will never die. I'm still here. I didn't disappear off the face of the earth. I love uh, the projects I do and I love making videos about them, uh, but it's not my main job. My main job is taking care of the family and my full-time paid work, so it's not always easy for me to make content, uh, but when I have the time and the space and something to say, that's when I'm going to post videos. Now, enough waffling from me, let's talk about the subject of this video, which is the Nix Package Manager. Now, a few months ago, I started hearing all this talk about Nix and people showing off its capabilities, and it feels like everyone is talking about it right now. And I'm wondering, where have I been all this time? Have I been living under a rock? How have I not heard anything about it up until now? Because if we look at the Google Trends, we can see the project has been rumbling along. In fact, the project started nearly 20 years ago, uh, so it's not new at all. And so I'm wondering, why am I only hearing about it now? I really don't know. I guess some of you will have been using it for years and years and years and I never even heard about it. Anyway, I started using it both for personal use and in my day job and I got into quite some depth with it and it is no exaggeration to say that it has completely changed the way I use computers. And so I need to talk about it now because I expect it's going to sit in the background of many of my future videos. Like I said, the channel is, is not dead, it's just, a, it's just a short hiatus. So what is so special about Nix? Well, the key innovation of the Nix package management system is that what is installed on your machine is defined by expressions written in a functional programming language. Now, it takes a little bit to fully understand the significance of this. Uh, like a lot of the greatest software, it's defined by simple yet powerful concepts that when you get into the detail, they have wonderful effects in the way that they work out. So we're gonna go through this and have a look at it in some detail, but let's just begin with a simple demonstration. So to begin with, I have an installation of Debian Linux here, and we're going to try installing Nix into it. Now there is also Nix OS, the operating system, which I'll talk about later, but to begin with, I'm just gonna focus on the Nix package manager itself, which can run on top of lots of other systems like Linux distros and Mac OS and even on Windows with WSL2. So here I am at nixos.org and we're going to go ahead and click download and here we have one of these dreaded uh, bash shell commands. Um, now if you're security conscious and you should be I would recommend taking the time to have a look into this script and what it's actually going to do uh, but for the sake of this video I'm just going to follow the instructions, copy this and then take it over to our terminal here and paste it inside. And if we go ahead and run it, it does some downloading things. And then it prints a little welcome message. Now you should take the time to read what this is saying, but I'm just gonna skip through everything just for the sake of speed. It tells you a bit about what it's gonna do. It warns you that it's gonna do things with sudo, asks us if we wanna go ahead, and then I just type in my sudo password. It does some installing. You just have to wait a moment. And we're done. Now it's saying at the bottom here, Nix won't work in active shell sessions until you restart them, which means that we have to close out of this terminal and restart it in order for everything to work. But before we do that, I'm very sorry to have to do this to you, but we have to do some custom configuration. So I'm gonna open up uh, Nix conf, and at the bottom of the file, I'm going to add this line, experimental features equals Nix command and flakes. Now, why did I do that? What is the reason for that? Well, I need to enable Nix flakes, and what are Nix flakes, you might ask? Nix flakes are a big paradigm shift uh, that has come to the Nix world. So these days, there are two different ways of doing everything, the classic way and the flakes way. Now, officially, flakes are still regarded as experimental and subject to change, so be aware of that. But I think in practice they're effectively a standard feature and I'm going to focus on doing things the flakes way in this video because as far as I'm concerned they are the way of the future and I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. 
Anyway, with Nix installed now, let's go ahead and do what the installer said. Close the terminal, open up a new one, boost up the font size, and now we can try running something very simple. So let's run Nix run, and then single quotes for this because I'm writing Nix packages, and then there's a hash here, which is why we need the single quotes. Otherwise, uh, some shells think that this is a comment. So let's go ahead and run this. And it downloads the Nix packages repository, which is a whole load of Nix source code. And then it does some thinking and some evaluating and decides what it's going to do. So give it a minute. And now it's downloaded the program and it has run it and it has printed hello world. So what I just happened there, well it downloaded the Nix packages repository code and used that to pull down GNU hello. So this is GNU hello, which is an extremely simple free software program that prints hello world on the terminal when you run it in your, your favorite language. And uh, we use Nix to pull down the package and it unpacked it and it ran it. There was no installation required, no compiling. Nix just went ahead and uh, set it up for us and here it is running. Now similarly, we can run uh, the same command again, but this time we can, instead of saying Nix run, uh, Nix shell with hello. So it didn't look like anything happened there, but what has actually happened is that Nix has opened up a nested shell and this has GNU hello running inside it. So we can now execute it as if it were installed into the system. Now let's look at where it was installed. So if I run command-v hello, it shows us where GNU hello was installed to. Well, I, I say installed, but it's not exactly installed. It's more just locally cached. And we can see here that the location that hello uh, was installed into is in Nix store, which is where everything in Nix lives, and then some long cryptographic hash, and then the package name, the version, and then within that, uh, this now is the prefix, the installation prefix of GNU hello. We have slash bin slash hello. Now, if you use Linux, you're probably aware of the FHS, which is the file system hierarchy standard. This is the conventional file system layout that practically every Unix system has as the standard place to install things. So right away, you can see that Nix has made a break with the FHS by mostly doing away with all that stuff. So in a typical Linux distribution, like this Debian machine we're using, when you look at the root of the file system, um, you'll see a bunch of familiar directories. Uh, for example, almost all binaries are, will be installed into slash USR slash bin here, and all libraries will be installed into slash USR slash lib, or a few different places, but uh, they have uh, those locations are defined by the, the FHS standard. And this means that every program and every library component and lots of other files you have installed into your system are installed into these standard places and are combined together into a giant mixture. So the good side of uh, this is that it means that uh, all, si all programs you have installed in your Debian system are always in the path. So you can just execute them rather than having to go and go find them uh, like you do when you run something in program files on Windows. In the same way, there's always one location for linkers to go and find libraries. And this is one of the primary reasons why shared libraries work comparatively well on Linux. A library can be installed into a common location and any program that wants to build against it can find it. But in Nix, we have this example with GNU hello and uh, every package, as you can see here, is separated into its own uh, cryptographic hash. So if we have a look in Nix store here, uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff here uh, all separated out uh, into different directories here. And so each of these cryptographic directories you see here in blue, uh, they are like layers that are combined together to create the execution environment. Now Docker does this kind of thing, but uh, that's done using uh, uh, kernel things using containers. Uh, in our case, it's mostly just done using specially constructed 
environment variables. So here we are in this Nix shell, remember, uh, and what Nix has done to create this Nix shell is set up a bunch of environment variables, particularly the path. So if we look at that here, you can see it's got the Debian standard path here, but then prepended on the front of it are Nix paths, and particularly the path to our hello ex um, our GNU hello world executable here. And uh, depending on what Nix is doing, it has a whole bunch of tricks like this, composing environment variables, patching things, wrapping things up in loader scripts, so that it can pull all the layers together to create the environment that you want. Now you might be wondering, why would I want to do this? Why would I want to install a second package manager into my Debian system? Because after all, it already has one, it has apt. Well, there's a couple of different answers that I found to this question. One is that the Nix package repository is absolutely enormous. It has more than 81,000 packages on offer, which is the largest in the world, even larger than Arch's user repository, the AUR, which is itself absolutely huge. Uh, but Nix even beats that in terms of the number of pieces of software that it offers. So there's a good chance the software you want will be packaged there. And also Nix has the largest number of fully up-to-date packages of any package repository. So Nix has a great selection of software to offer. Another reason why you might want it on your system is uh, perhaps a more important reason is that it is built around the concept of reproducible builds. Nix goes to great lengths to ensure that no matter how or where or when it does a thing, uh, it always will produce the same outcomes. It will always produce the same files byte for byte. So you can always rely on Nix to give you software in a way that is completely deterministic. Now this is particularly valuable when you need to make build environments or runtime environments that need to be shared between multiple machines or between multiple users. For example, if I'm developing a piece of software and I want to provide other developers with the same environment that I have been doing my work in, I can simply write some Nix code and bundle it up alongside the source code and uh, Nix can then use that to generate the same environment that I have on demand on someone else's machine. So to demonstrate this, I've written a very simple C++ demo program that you can see here. And it has dependencies on two libraries, the boost headers library and SDL2. And uh, we might use these dependencies if we were building a game or some media application, something like that. And if you look here in the main program, uh, the main function here, you can see it's really, really simple. It couldn't be much simpler than what it is. It, it just prints out the version numbers of these two libraries and then exits. And then if we look over here, you can see the whole thing's tied together uh, with this CMake build system. Uh, and what CMake does here is that it will find the dependencies of our application, it will find Boost, it will find SDL2, looking in various paths around the system, and then uh, we create the executable with the sources, and then we depend on, we tell it to link against those two uh, dependency libraries. Now, of course, what CMake provides for you is that it will find the libraries for you, but it won't provide them onto your system. You as the developer have to go and do that. Now, as dependencies go, Boost and SDL2 are relatively tame. They're quite large and quite tricky to build, but most Linux distributions have got you covered, but for argument's sake, you can imagine that if we were working with other developers, we might want to include more and more dependencies into our project to save ourselves from reinventing the wheel. But of course, each dependency we add to our project takes a certain amount of effort to provide. It's never quite zero, and there's, there's always some overhead in depending on those things. And, uh, and some dependencies that we might wish to include are particularly challenging to deal with. They might be very difficult to build, for example. So we've seen the main source file and the CMake file, and I've gone ahead and pre-created the, the Nix flake and the flake.lock file which accompanies it, and I'll explain what goes into those in a moment. But before we do that, let's have a look at what these files can do for us. So let's start with something very simple. Let's do Nix flake show. Now Nix flake show is a handy command that visualizes the contents of a Nix flake. And a Nix flake is like a pot that you can put lots of different Nix objects that Nix will recognize. And there's a whole schema of different things that uh, Nix will recognize if you put them into a flake. In practice, you can put anything you want in a Nix flake, but within the schema of things that are documented, these are the things that the rest of Nix will be able to make sense out of. 
So looking at the output of Nick's Flake show, you can see the route is uh, the path to this Git repository we're sitting in. Uh, we are just focusing on packages as opposed to any other Nix things, Nix objects. Uh, and I've made this flake just build for 64-bit uh, Intel uh, Linux. And we've got one package inside, which is the default package, the OTL Nix test app. So let's go ahead and do something really simple with this. Let's go and run it. So if I just do Nix run, because this is the Nix flake, uh, in this directory and because our package is the default we don't need to say anything more than that we can just go nix run and you can see our application is built and running right here very simple uh, there are other things we can do we can also do nix build and that will go ahead and build our application and now you can see a link has appeared in the directory a symbolic link and that symbolic link goes off to some path in the Nix store. And so if we uh, follow where that goes to, you can see we've got our, uh, our test application is built here. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see it runs like that also. Another thing Nix can do for us if we run Nix develop is that it can drop us inside one of those Nix shells. Again, it doesn't look like we've done anything but actually we are now sitting inside inside a nested shell and inside this shell we could start doing development work because all the dependencies of the build process have been provided in inside this environment so for example i could go in ahead and create the build directory and uh, activate cmake now we have a make file we can go and build and we got our test application again so there you go, that's what our flake does for us. So now let's have a look at what's inside that flake. Now I don't want to get too embroiled in teaching the Nix language because I think that's best off done just by studying the manual. But uh, let's have a look at what the contents of this file is anyway. Um, the one thing to notice is that whole, the whole file has curly braces around it, which means this whole file is a big set, as they're called in Nix, which is similar to a dictionary. They are key value pairs. And so the first uh, key we have is the description and the name, the description of what this Nix flake contains. And then we have this entry here called inputs. Now, the way Nix flakes works is that they pull in Nix code from places out on the internet or locally on your computer. And then you use this Nix code to do things that you want. So we have one dependency of this Nix, uh, this Nix file here. Uh, and it depends on the Nix packages repository, the most recent version. Uh, this here is just an abbreviated way of referring to repositories in, in GitHub. So this is actually just an abbreviated way of specifying the Git repository of the Nix packages. And I want the most recent release from November in 2022. And then with those inputs, uh, these then feed into this uh, function as it is here that takes these two arguments. And the Nix packages argument came from uh, this input here. And what we have received here is the path to where Nix has decided to store our local copy of the Nix packages in the local Nix packages store. And we also get self, which is useful for referring back to ourselves in some cases. Anyway, uh, I mentioned when I did Nix Flake show that uh, we're just creating packages here and uh, we've got packages for the x86 system and then within this uh, sections that are marked let and in we are where you define local variables so what we do is we take that path to the next packages repository code and we import it which means of course load all that code up and uh, resolve the expression that is Nix packages and actually Nix packages is a gigantic 100,000 line long function that takes a few arguments. In this case we're only providing one argument which is the type of system that we want to target here and so with that we have this gigantic object here <laughs> called packages which gives us all the packages that we're going to need. And now we can use that to actually do useful things. So now we can define our package, the default package, and uh, we can use, reference within the packages repository uh, this thing called studenv. Studenv is an unusual kind of Nix package that also provides functionality that most other packages use to build things. And it is a bundle of tools and uh, 
uh, things like the compiler and so on, and uh, also a bunch of stuff that we need in order to build things. And then we're going to use this function called make derivation. Uh, a derivation is kind of like a package in Nix. So we're just, you can make derivations in raw form, uh, then you have to do a lot of things for yourself. This thing called studenv just automates a bunch of stuff, which means that uh, your code can be much simpler. And for this reason, almost any package you encounter in Nix will use studenv to build itself. So then we have the name of our package, of course, uh, the name of the binary, the source code. Uh, we specify a path because, of course, the source code is just adjacent to our Nix flake here. And then we can define what our project depends on. So the native build inputs are the, thing, are the packages that we need in order to perform the build. I put CMake here because we need that to build. We don't have to specify GCC or anything else because that is part of studenv. And then there are a, few, uh, a couple of things that our application needs to run, which are, of course, boost and SDL2. So we have to specify those as dependencies of the build. Uh, and then that's all there is to it. Now, before we move on, there's a couple of refinements that I'd like to make to our Nix flake just to improve the code a little bit. So the first is a very small little language feature that I rather like. Uh, one of the things uh, from the golden rules of programming is do not repeat yourself. It's generally very bad to copy and paste and repeat yourself over and over again. And Nix provides lots of ways of avoiding do doing that. And with this with packages directive, we can reduce all these pkgs dot in front of all our package names in this list, for example. And it can also be used to do different things like this in different places. And you can imagine if we had a long list of inputs, we would need to repeat ourselves many times. So with packages allows us to avoid having to do that. So that's one improvement. Another is I just wanted to go and have a quick go back over this let in section. So this defines local variables that we fed into this set here that starts here. And this set is all the packages that we've defined for x86 Linux. But we could equally move this, um, these definitions and define our local variables at a level further out. So for example, if we put brackets around the whole thing uh, like this, uh, we can equally well um, define some local uh, variables at the outer, the, out, the level of the outer set here. So that's a it, it, that might be useful if we had more different types of thing, not just packages that we're outputting, but maybe we were outputting something else here, uh, different things that can go in the schema for a Nix flake at the same time. Now, perhaps the most important improvement that I want to make to our Nix flake is to make it a bit more portable between different platforms, because I only support x86 Linux right now, but uh, with a bit of refinement, we can make this Nix flake support lots of different platforms all at once. Now, a lot of Nix flakes out there are using uh, this piece of code. Uh, this is a utilities repository. So we can pull it in from the GitHub URL. And uh, we're going to pull in numtide slash flake utils. OK, so this is a piece of another piece of Nix code that lives on GitHub. And uh, if we do that in the inputs, we also need to add it as an argument uh, on the outputs here. And so we'll get the path to that Nix code when Nix downloads it. Now, we, now with that code then imported, we can take the, uh, the big set that we defined for the outputs before, uh, before, and we can wrap it up inside a function call. And we're going to be calling this function uh, flakeutils.nib.each default system. And this will take what we've defined inside and we'll invoke it once for every different uh, type of system that Nix supports. And then uh, it takes an argument that we need to put in here. So we need to allow it to feed in the argument here. So each default system we will then invoke this function we've just defined uh, with the system argument that defines what we're actually going to build for. So then instead of having this hard-coded uh, x64 Linux, we would go, uh, well, you can go system, system equals system, which takes this system and applies it as an argument to Nix packages. But that's a bit ugly and cumbersome, so we can actually use the Nix language feature inherit, which is the same thing, just a little bit less confusing, I would say. 
Uh, let's wrap that up on one line just to make it a bit briefer as well, which I kind of like. And then in the same way, we can, because we've got this each default system thing, we no longer have to put this here. It will automatically take this packages set that we're defining and, uh, and copy it for each default platform. So let's just jump out here and check if this is going to work. We do Nix Flake Show. And there you go. You can see we've got, it's automatically created the same package that can build on Darwin, which is Mac OS, and for 64-bit uh, ARM, for the 64-bit ARM architecture. So that's pretty neat. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you're finding it all interesting so far. We've really only just scratched the surface of what Nix has to offer, and we're going to go into it in a lot more depth in some coming videos that I've got lined up. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon on the Open Tech Lab.